Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. Some people were paying Super Bowl-like prices to watch Zion Williamson and Duke take on North Carolina last night at Cameron Indoor. They saw him for about 33 seconds, then his shoe gave out, and he suffered what they are calling a slight knee sprain, but we'll see how that thing turns out. For years, I have felt that college football and basketball players were paid well enough with around $100,000 for their college tuition and room and board, but now I think I'm coming around to the other side. Some people paid over $3,000 to get close up to Williamson last night, and Zion doesn't get a penny. But Coach K and the Duke Athletic Department cash in to the tune of over $10 million a year, at least for the coach. Now, Zion won't be getting a penny from Nike, the shoe that blew up last night, but they could get $100 million a little bit later from the company once he is drafted. As for Williamson, hopefully he's not hurt too bad. Either way, though, somebody ought to give him Nick Bosa's phone number, and then he can go let Coach K and his Blue Devils try to win a national championship without him. The D-man, Dennis Maniloff, is here. More sports and Les Levine starts right now. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a Thursday night. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into our 23rd consecutive year and now exclusively here on Cleveland.com. And D-man, Dennis Maniloff from The Plain Dealer is with us. You okay? <laughs> a lot of yeah. excitement here in the studio. Yeah, I feel like I've, uh, I've been on a ship in <laughs> stormy waters We're, the last couple of We are going to make it through here <laughs> over the next hour. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Did you see Zion last night? Yes, I did. I saw the shoe explosion, the knee. Uh, I couldn't help but think, you know, I pray for the young man that it wasn't a severe injury. Right. If it turns out to be, and again, with when it happens to somebody else, it's always minor. Right. But if it turns out to be minor, how, how fortunate he was because he looked that close to right. being catastrophic. But I couldn't agree more with your, your opening comment, Les. Uh, I've been in favor of athletes getting paid uh, a certain amount. Certainly D1 uh, men's basketball and D1 uh, men's football. Uh, to me, the revenue producers deserve to get paid somehow, some way. I don't know how to do it exactly. But, in the, but the Williamson case is a microcosm of – why those of us on that side think the way we do. Well, if you're going to tie it in with other sports and Title IX and all that, it, you probably can't do it. You could do it at the Dukes of the world in basketball and, and North Carolina and Ohio State and all that, but how do you pay the third-string uh, rower on the uh, rowing team? Well, that's exactly it. I, I think you don't. I, I think you pay the people who are – in again, the number, the clear numbers one and two revenue producers. I don't know which one is in, in first place college football, college, uh, men's college basketball. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, no, no offense to the women or the rowers or the tennis players of male or female. I, I'm talking about the revenue producers, the two giants in college are basket, are men's basketball and uh, and men's uh, f football, obviously men's football. But you could, I guess, look at women's college basketball as well. But to me, Zion Williamson is out there risking a lot. A lot of money is surrounding that game last night in various things, such as, as you said, seats, uh, advertising revenue for the game that night on ESPN, and the coach's salary, the co the assistant coach's salaries, sure. and Williamson's not benefiting. And like you, you made a point. We always heard it said, "Oh well, the players are there to for a free education." Not when you know why the guy is there. Right. Zion Williamson is not there for a, an education. He just isn't. We know it. Everybody knows it. Okay, so don't don't even try to pretend like Williamson is staying beyond this year. As long as that's the case, 
then don't tell me, well, he's there for a $100,000 education because he's not. He's not a student athlete. I, I mean, it gets into murky waters with college. Cause they, I believe it's ridiculous to call one and duns when you know they're going to be one and duns to call them student athletes because it's realistic to believe that Zion Williamson is not even going to finish his freshman right. year. He could, once the tournament is over, he could he could be gone. Well, I think he would be. I, I think he would yeah. he would end even his, before, fr before his, his year. freshman year. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm not, and that's not a knock on any of these one and duns. In fact, I'm supporting the one and duns. Identify why you are actually there, and then once you identify why you're there. Adjust accordingly. I remember in the mid '80s, and I was doing Cleveland State basketball at the time, and we went up to play Indiana, the game that Cleveland State wound up with the, one of the biggest upsets in the history of the NCAA tournament. It was at it was at Syracuse, and Syracuse has their own problems today, starting today, right now. But but I remember Pearl Washington was the big player at that time for Syracuse, and you go into into the uh, clothing stores or uh, into the uh, varsity shops or whatever you call them, all you see was number 31, number 31, number 31. Somebody was making millions off number 31, and it wasn't number 31. Uh, sure. And, you know, somebody, and I've had blowback when I've proposed this in years past about only select players should get paid, the revenue producers on a college campus. Oh, how can you not give the rower, the tennis player, the the, sky, the soccer player money? Well, look at how it works in the professional ranks, okay? Quarterbacks make a ton of money, and a certain position on the field doesn't make as right. much money. It's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. And and people associated with the team, the team manager of an NFL team or an, an NFL assistant to the assistant, he doesn't make a whole lot of money compared to the wide receiver. It, it happens in all walks of life that you have staggered, uh, you know, a staggered salary sure. breakdown. Why, why can't it be the case here that the primary revenue producers on the campus get paid something? 216-575-0403 is the number to call. You can email us during the show at Levine at gmail.com, and we'll, uh, re we'll uh, respond to those emails throughout the show. Dennis Maniloff is here. Uh, we'll get back to Williamson and uh, Nick Bosa and a couple of other things along that line. But I want to talk a little bit about the Browns because uh, we've noticed that for the first time since they've been back in 1920, they may in fact be the most stable team in the, uh, in the division, in the uh, AFC North. Would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, I've listened to a ton of sports talk in the last 48 hours about the Pittsburgh Steelers. And 90% of it has not been positive. Well, here's what's happened so. in the uh, AFC North. Changes made since the end of last season. Cleveland Browns have hired Freddie Kitchen as their new head coach. And they've signed Kareem Hunt to a one-year deal. We uh, look over to the Pittsburgh Steelers. We think about the negativity there. They did not place the uh, franchise tag on Le'Veon Bell. And Antonio Brown seeking a trade, as we expected. The Baltimore Ravens, uh, Joe Flacco gets traded to Denver. Uh, Lamar Jackson gets the starting quarterback position. Jackson completed some 58% of his, his passes in 2018. Cincinnati Bengals, let's see what they've done. Well, they uh, recently hired Zach Taylor as a new head coach. He was the Rams quarterback coach last year. And they were the last team to hire a, a, a defensive coordinator. They did that today. Unbelievable. Plus, I can't believe the Bengals passed on Hugh Jackson as their uh, <laughs> Defe head coach. No, defensive. <laughs> as their head coach. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I, I wonder how Jackson's feeling after he angled in on the uh, – the Marvin Lewis sweepstakes. I think he's doing fine. I got reports uh, from several people that he was having a fine dinner at a restaurant in Chagrin Falls yeah, over the he, weekend. He's got plenty of money. But here's yeah. the point. Uh, the Bengals, I believe, the Browns should be able to beat them for years to come, even if uh, you grant uh, the return to health of Andy Dalton and A.J. Green. The Ravens, I'm not as quick to dismiss them. I mean, first of all, they won the division. They're the division champs. They deserve amount of, uh, an amount of respect for that. Jackson, I know he has issues throwing the ball, but I want to see how that plays out before right. I bury the Ravens. Well, and their defense the Ravens, is still e very good. Either the Ravens will come up with a way to get him, to Jackson to do it, 
uh, to do it right, or the defenses will. It'll be the offense for, of, of the uh, uh, of the uh, Ravens against the defense of the other teams in the division. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to sit here and automatically say the Browns are going to be better than the Ravens and the Steelers. I know they're going through a lot and they've got issues and Brown and, and Bell are seemingly on their way out and Roethlisberger's being called out for his leadership and the way he does his business. But I, they're still the Steelers. And, and they so still have a great offensive line. I'm not saying you genuflect at their altars, the Ravens and the Steelers, but I'm not going to automatically put the Browns as division champs until I see them play <laughs> a few games in 2019. Absolutely. Uh, coming up, we'll uh, check in. We'll get back to the uh, Zion Williamson and Nick Boza situation. It's an interesting conversation, which we will have with Dennis Maniloff of The Plain Dealer. More sports and less Levine continues uh, we've got Facebook.com uh, slash More Sports and Less Levine with new content posted each and every day. You can check that out, and uh, your comments can be posted also right here on the show. We do it live from 6 until 7, and you can find us uh, throughout the day at Cleveland.com. More Sports and Less Levine continues in a moment. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The heart-pounding, fast-breaking action of college basketball is back when the 2019 Mid-American Conference Basketball Tournament returns to the queue March 13th through the 16th, presented by Visit Myrtle Beach. Pulses will rise and hearts will race as the men and women of the MAC put it all on the line. Tickets for the MAC tournament are on sale now at the Q box office, online at thequeuearena.com, and at all Northern Ohio discount drug marts. MAC Tournament Basketball, be there. Let's take a, take a look at the birthdays for today. My, my lovely wife, Allison, celebrating a birthday today. Uh, Izzy Finish, 1947, Alan Trammell. You think he's a Hall of Famer, D-Man? Trammell? Yeah, I thought he was, yeah. Yeah, Joel Skinner. Still can't get over him not sending Kenny Lofton. Skins. Franklin Gutierrez, looks like an Indian's day. And uh, Brown's day, Braylon Edwards actually holding on to the football. And Ryan Merritt. Indian pitcher who really came up with one of the, the great pitching uh, performances in recent Indians history. Blue Jays sluggers yeah. are still wondering how they didn't hit him. Yeah, I'm wondering myself. Uh, how about this date in sports history, February 21st, 1968. Baseball announces its new uh, minimum salary in a year, 10,000 bucks. <laughs> it's tip money today. If that. Yeah. Well, 19 to me, 1968 doesn't sound that seem that far away, but. Yeah, it's up there in uh, in years. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. All right, when when uh, Nick Bosa got hurt, yes, I th I think everybody understood why he did what he did. Yes. There was a time ten fifteen years ago, if a guy did that, you'd say, "Come on, play the bowl game, and if you get hurt, you'll get better before the the draft and whatever." But I think most people understood what Nick Bosa did, and I don't think they held it against him. Even the the staunchest Ohio State fan. Hundred percent agree. 
Unless it's always been my position because we are not in their position. If a stud is injured or doesn't want to play in the case of football, the bowl game, doesn't want to finish the season coming off of groin injury like uh, Bosa, or in the case of Williamson, if he wakes up today or tomorrow and says, you know what, it's been real, but I'm going to get ready for Fine. Yeah. I have never had an issue with that. If you want to go ahead and play, that's fine too. But darn it, if for me to say to that guy, hey, Zion, you know, you need to fin- finish the year or you need to play March Madness for the sake of the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah. You, Baloney. You, you get Duke Blue Devils whose coach makes maybe $10 million a year, but plus endorsements and all. Um, it's not in his position to worry about how the team does in the NCAA tournament in regards to that player. Exactly. I mean, he, Zion, he owes Zion. it to the player. And, and, and the thing is, we're talking about exceptions to the rule here, Les. When, right. we, when we talk about a player or two sitting out a bowl game, we're not talking about the entire roster. Why? Because not everybody, you know, the small minority of every D1 team, if that, is going to be drafted. Truth we're be t- talking about guys who are studs. Truth be told, if it's not for the championship game, if a player says, you know, I, I don't want to take a chance, I, I, I'm, I'm going pro football, uh, I don't want to take a chance of getting hurt, the coach probably is, even though he may fake that he's upset about it, he's going to be happy about it because it gives him a chance to put other players in there who they need for next year. Uh, sure, and you have to understand, I mean, krzyzewski has got to understand this going in. When he gets Zion Williamson to agree to come to play for him, he has to run it through his head. You know what? What what happens if Zion Williamson is to get hurt, let's say, a week before yeah. uh, the NCAA tournament, and he decides not to play? That well, has yeah, what to do run I owe? through The coach has to say, mind. what do I owe him? Sure. And so I don't think he's going to be upset about it. I mean, obviously it will damage Duke's, Duke's chances. But I hear some people say – well, it'll cost uh, Shashevsky uh, potential bonuses if he if his team doesn't get to the final. Oh my God, are you <laughs> kidding me? You think Shashevsky doesn't make enough money as it is? I mean, sure, I, he can be entitled to as much as he wants, but if it's not going to happen because Zion Williams sits out, I'm not feeling sorry for him. And wasn't Coach K one of the last guys to go to the other side? Wasn't he? He wasn't a, a one and done guy. Well, that's the as the the the, ser- the story goes. You know, the the first guy that really uh, fostered that environment was Cal, was Coach Calipari, right, right. and supposedly <laughs> a couple of coaches, including Shishovsky, looked around and said, "I want to be like that." Okay, I want some of if that. If I got to compete against him, I got to play on a level playing field. Right, and therefore, you know, okay, what are, are the Duke legendary academic standards going to be in place? Uh, no, they're not. For even if you have a genius coming in, he may say, "I only want to play one year." Well, are you gonna are you gonna stop him from doing that? And obviously, Duke hasn't in the past few years. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. You can email us during the show at reallesslevine at gmail dot com. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, the winning uh, weekend, that'll be, of course, Dave Bacon. I'll be on radio tomorrow, 92.3 The Fan, from 10 until 2. In for uh, Andy Baskin, I'll be along with Jeff Phelps, 10 to 2 tomorrow on 92.3 The Fan. We're going to come back in a moment. We're going to find out what Mike is thinking. Mike Massetta standing by out at Nature Stone. We'll uh, throw some things out at him. He'll throw them back at us, and we will respond to that. And uh, we'll take a break and come on back in a moment. Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. Catch the excitement of live harness racing Monday through Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday with the 6 p.m. post time. Open early every day at noon for simulcast action from around the world to top harness and thoroughbred tracks all over the place. Free admission, free parking every day. That's in Northfield Park. We'll come back in a moment. More sports and Les Levine exclusively on Cleveland.com. Your basement is damp, dirty, and not somewhere you want to spend time. Let Nature Stone Flooring transform your basement into a true extension of your home. Nature Stone's proprietary hydrostatic ports allow water to simply evaporate so no mold or mildew. Plus, it has a higher insulation rating than carpet and is warmer than linoleum, vinyl, wood, or tile. Schedule your free in-home estimate easily online today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable basement floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. There are tastes we remember. 
Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line. A long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Welcome back. More sports and Les Levine. Time for a how come quickie. How come uh, there is a Cameron indoor, but there is not a Cameron outdoor? Of course, that's where uh, the Duke Blue Devils play uh, play basketball. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. The D-man, uh, Dennis Maniloff, is with us. We're going to go out to Nature Stone, and uh, we'll say hi to Mike Massetta. Michael, how are you? Uh, are you there? I'm having trouble hearing. 216-575-0403. Let's try it again. Mike, can you hear me? Mike Massetta of Nature Stone. Uh, we'll try to hook up with him again momentarily and uh, see what he has to say. Lots of stuff to talk about. A very knowledgeable guy and a very great company. No question about that. And uh, let's go to the Facebook question and uh, see uh, what you had to say. If you were Zion Williamson, would you play college basketball again? That's the obvious question. And uh, let's see what uh, we say. Daniel Chick says, with the money he's making, I wouldn't. Andy Mee says, no, I'm, uh, if I'm projected as the number one overall pick, I'd quit while I was ahead in this case. Nothing left to prove playing more college ball. When the money talks, nobody walks. Peter J. Butler, yes, finish out the season and go get that national championship. It's a once-in-a-lifetime deal. Glenn Berger, yes, he can continue to work on his game while trying to win a national championship, then go off to the NBA. Angelo Costanzo, yes, he's about winning championships. Boy, I don't know. This is a tough one. This is this is like, I'm not trying to say that Zion Williamson is as good as uh, LeBron James was at that same time, but he's probably the best one that we've seen since LeBron James, even though LeBron didn't go to college at all. And so I think uh, the rules change when it comes to Zion Williamson versus a, quote, really good player. And I think that very few, when you think about it, very few Ohio State fans were all that upset when Nick Bosa decided not to continue on, uh, rehab himself, and then continue on and, and play, uh, play the, finish out the season for Ohio State, uh, hopefully going for a national championship. But I think most people understood, same situation five, ten years ago, I don't think he would have had that backing. Right, let's go back and see if we've got Mike Massetta. Mike, are you there? Hey, Les, I'm here. How you there doing? You, I'm doing well. Hey, see if I got this imitation right. You ready? Wow. Right, I'm ready. Wow, Nature Stone. Did I get the it's wow? Like it's the four. Wow, it's Nature Stone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I'm going to make you. I'm going to get my magic wand out here. I'm making you uh, Zion Williamson. What are you? What are you telling Coach K about the rest of the season? Um, I, man, I, you know, I'd probably tell him I'm done. I, I got a professional career, and there's only yeah. a handful of kids that are going to be able to. Uh, you know, say that they can play in the NBA, let alone be a number one draft, they can make that kind of money. So How I, I, I got to tell them it's been a great, great run. Yeah. I, I, I wish you guys well, but uh, I'm going to do a Nick Bosa and I'll, I'll, I'll be in the NBA. Better yet, Coach K, I'm going to make more than you make. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> I'll recruit for you. I'll recruit for yeah. you. I'll bring you all the players you want to win the championship from here on out. But, Coach, Coach K, yeah, you get Coach K, you gave me the best six weeks of my life. <laughs> <laughs> those, those kids, you know, it, it's hard to understand, but, you know, when you're, when you're watching these kids in college and, and, and in, in, in uh, football as, as well as basketball, there's very few of them that actually get to go 
go on to make a professional career. Yeah. And even if people that are actually successful at it, that, that are in the league for more than a year or two before, you know, uh, 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 you know not making a team or getting set to the, 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 the G League and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. You know, a kid, kid like that, you, you, you've got to uh, take a shot when, when, when he has it. You so know, I'm, this I'm this. All for it. This came to light with me for a lot of years. I, I did uh, Kent State games for four years and Cleveland State games maybe 22, 23 years. And, you know, you think of it, Cleveland State and Kent State, you're talking about mid-majors and uh, very few pro prospects, especially in those days. And yet even the eighth or ninth guy on the team thought he had a chance for the NBA if that coach would just give him a chance. That's the way they thought. And well, I guess, they should think that way. That's yeah. why they're playing at the Division One level. I take nothing away from them for, for believing that and believing in themselves. Right. It's just once you get there, the funnel just gets so, so much smaller. And, you know, put yourself in their shoes for a second. I mean, yeah, if you're a Duke fan, you want Zion to play because, you know, you you got a better chance of winning a national championship. But ultimately, you know, this kid's an NBA prospect. I mean, it, you know, you got to do what's best for the kid. And, and, and in this case, that, I think that's it. I knew my own ability when I was a ball, baseball player. I thought I was pretty good. I thought, you know, there's a, such thing as a five-tool player. I was a one-tool player. I was a rake. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know something. I, I, I don't know. Maybe you you did the same thing I did. You know, you just went out and played ball. You didn't think of somebody watching you and judging you and what your ability was. You just played ball and tried to win baseball games. I assume. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's. Any kid can, can, can do, especially at the at the youth levels, and then going up through high school and so forth. You just go play and you have fun, and you're you're not really worried about what the next step is. And you know that's why a lot of these kids that I see that you know they, they get so specialized in one one sport at age you know ten years old. Right. It's like you know hey you know you, you go out there and just, just play all the sports and see what happens. I mean most of the guys that are playing professionally. They played, you know, three, four sports growing up, and, and, and almost all through high school. They didn't just specialize in one sport. Yeah. They just happened to be really, really, really good and really big and athletic, and, you know, they, they went on to pro careers. I, I know you're involved in coaching young kids with, with your son, uh, who's, who I'm told from several sources is a really good athlete. But some, <laughs> a lot of times it's, it's – you're one of my sources. A lot of times um, the, the players – um, they don't. The, the kids just want to enjoy playing the game, and sometimes it's the parents sitting up in the stands that become the problem. Yeah, if you if you talk to the kids, there, there's really only a couple reasons why they play. One is because it's fun and they enjoy it, and two is because they want to play with their friends. Right. So you know that's those are the two biggest reasons why any any kid plays a sport. You know, they're not thinking about oh, you know, I could go on to play in high school. We, we're we're the, the dummies that that mess that up for them. Yeah. And they, and they, you know, the dads, and we're the we're the ones that say, oh, you know, if, if you work this this much harder and you get these individual lessons, you know, you got a better shot at playing uh, high school ball. You know, I, I I tell kids all the time, there's certain sports that are that are what I call big man sports, and they're just you know, it, it, it is what it is. And when you're a young kid and you know you're playing, have fun with it because when you get a little bit older. You know, a lot of times, you know, they're looking at the, the, the intangibles, the things that you can't teach a kid, it, it, the size, the speed, the strength, you know, that type of stuff. And, and if it's not there, you know, you, you may not get a chance to play at the next level. So enjoy what you got now because you never know what the future is going to hold. Yeah, you got a 10 or an 11-year-old, they're probably not going to be making the major leagues. So just let them learn the game and uh, learn, <laughs> and more importantly, learn the right way and learn what whatever, quote, life lessons the game is going to teach you, right? Exactly. And there are a lot to be learned playing sports, individual sports and uh, uh, team sports. Individual sports teach you uh, a sense of individualism, you know, how to prepare for things as an individual and, and, how, and how to be able to uh, uh, attack different circumstances yourself within you. And then team sports teach you to build as a team and how to, and how to, you know, how to play a role uh, with, with a larger group to get after a, a goal of winning a, a championship or a game or whatever it might be. Mike, There's just a lot of life lessons to be learned there. All right, life lessons. Uh, would you pay more to watch Zion Williamson against North Carolina or uh, or uh, the Phoenix Suns against the Cavaliers tonight? Which one would you pay more money? <laughs> I'm going to go Zion versus North Carolina. <laughs> if he's the second tonight, I'm watching that game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, should be a, a thrill-packed game down at the queue. 
So, yes, that's you know, exactly right. I think yeah. if, if you're a Cavs fan, I think you really want to play well and come close and just miss out at the end and, and keep your win totals way down. Stay, stay, stay within the margin of error. You want, <laughs> you want to be one of the, the, the worst two teams in the league. Right, and, and make I'll it look like you're playing hard. That other kid for, for, for Duke, that R.J. Barrett, he's a player, too. He's a yeah, but, but, a shooter. Yeah, I mean, but he's, he's a good player also. He is a good player, but he's not Zion Williamson. All right, Mike. Thanks for joining us. As always, we will uh, we will talk to you soon. It's wow. Right, it's wow. Wow. Care. It's Nature Stone. There you go. All right. Thanks to Mike Massetta. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call, and you can uh, email us right now at reallesslevine at gmail dot com. Dennis Maniloff will join us when we get back. Uh, more sports and less Levine can also be followed on Facebook, facebook dot com slash more sports and less Levine with new content posted each and every day. We're going to take a look at the Indians' uh, suggested or projected lineups, and uh, it's not a pretty sight, but this. Las Vegas still thinks the uh, Indians are going to win their division. Back in a moment, more sports and less Levine continues right here exclusively on Cleveland.com. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family warm this winter, here, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. It takes Smiley One heating and cooling to bring the heat when things get chilly. Find us at 440-449-HEAT. We've never tried to not emphasize it. We just had some guys that weren't able to do it. I mean, yonder, never did he not hustle. He just was really slow. You know, Edwin wasn't exactly a base dealer. We've brought guys back, you know, in Bowers, even Carlos. You know, so one through nine, we don't have anybody that's a clogger. And we feel like that is a, a, a part of the game where you can separate yourself from other teams if you do it correctly. So we don't want to overlook it because moving up 90 feet is really meaningful. And it's hard to quantify, like in today's game, with all the numbers that you have, it's really hard to quantify. It doesn't mean it's not important. A lot of guys who have high walk rates in their career too. I don't know if that's been a point of emphasis just in gathering. Talent. Well, I mean, but get, having guys get on base is is always important. You know, the idea, there's an idea behind it. And, there, and again, some people feel differently. I personally feel like the guy, you want guys to walk that almost scare the pitcher out of the zone a little bit. Not that you're going up looking for a walk, but you have guys swinging at pitches they should swing at. And then the byproduct is they're not chasing balls out of the zone, so they'll take a walk when it's there. There you go. D-Man, we took a look. This is uh, MLB.com, and this is the projected opening day lineup. And despite this lineup, they're, uh, actually most people are saying the Indians are going to win their division. So here you go. Leonis Martin leading off. Jason Kipnis second. Jose Ramirez. Carlos Santana. Uh, Jake uh, Bowers. Of course, you don't have, uh, Carl, you, you don't have uh, Francisco Lindor in there. Batting six would be Tyler Naquin, uh, Jordan Luplo uh, seventh, uh, Roberto Perez is eighth, 
and Yu Chang would be the opening day shortstop if uh, uh, they can't get everybody yeah, back. Know. All right, this is this is pretty ugly. This is not good, and yet the Indians still projected to win the division by yeah. a comfortable margin. I, I don't know. I guess I'm stubborn. I still think there's going to be a guy that comes in late, but. A sign guess, yeah, and not, nothing dramatic, but certainly in, in the in Luplo, in the case of Luplo, I have no offense to Luplo at this point, but come on, there's got to be somebody better than yeah, Jordan and, and Luplo I'm agreeing at this with you. particular point. I'm agreeing with you, and I've never, other than highlights, I've never, I've never seen the kid play. I've only read on him, yeah. exactly, but I'm saying that there's just not... There has to be a guy with a body of major league work. But then again, the Indians are, are sticking to the – because look at Moustakas. Now, I'm not guaranteeing that Moustakas was going to come here on a one-year, ten-year, million-dollar right. deal. Maybe he, he found it so comfortable in Milwaukee he wanted to stay there regardless. But it shows the Indians are not going to get into it with a team or with a player – if it gets to a certain salary number. Although, don't Otherwise, you, they wouldn't have gotten rid of Jan Gomes. Right, but don't you think that there's some people out there that will fall through the cracks as, as people, you know, once Bryce Harper gets signed and and so they got those two guys taken care of, don't you think there's a chance some guys will uh, come through the tra cracks that they're not expecting? Yeah, I've been saying that week after week on yeah, this show. Less. And then, you know, and this is our first week that one of those two has signed, right. okay? Machado signs with the Padres, $300 million guaranteed. And I was saying, well, when Machado and Harper sign, the, the rest of the market prices will get set. I'm not really sure that's the case, no. though. If you have a $300 million guy and let's say Harper comes in right around the same number, is that going to automatically set the price for the rest of the guys? There's No, because those two salaries are so exorbitant. Hey, there's going to be plenty of room between them Let, and the next tier. Let's forget pitchers for a moment. What number out of the top 50, let's say, or top 40, where does Machado stand? Where does uh, uh, Bryce Harper stand? What number? In, in terms of? Uh, what uh, Top 10 player, top well, 15? Player value? Yeah. I mean, uh, these two guys, it, it, Machado gets $300 million. Harper probably will top it. And I don't see either of them in the top 10 of, not, of position ball players. I, I, I guess I'd want to lean more toward Harper than Machado as a, an impact player. But, uh, yeah, I, I, look, good for Manny Machado. And, and, you know, the baseball players were upset because the owners yeah, collusion. Were, were colluding. And then all of a sudden the Padres shell out $300 million, right. And the players uh, pivot off that and say, well, where's mine? You know, they, there's no longer any well, collusion to worry both, about. Can't have it both exactly, ways. Exactly, but they they want to have it both ways. Yeah. But my my thing with Machado is I'm glad he got his money because I just don't see the San Diego Padres becoming a powerhouse anytime soon. Granted, they had they have the number one ranked uh, minor league system according to many, but I I don't know. I, uh, I don't here's see. what I don't understand. Maybe you can help me because you're a hundred years younger than me. The the new way that we value players. Yes. There are ways of telling you how many, uh, the war, how many uh, wins. Uh, above replacement. Uh, above yeah. replacement. And various other metrics, and, yes. And various other ones. And the one that you see with Machado is that he, he's only worth two and a half, two, two and a half or three wins more to San Diego next year than they would be without him. How is it possible that two and a half wins as the difference is worth $300 million in over a 10-year deal? Yeah. How's it possible? I, I don't know, Les. And you're also dealing with a guy who has self-admitted character issues. Yeah, he says, I don't, I don't hustle. You know, and so you're asking him to be the face of your franchise, yeah. not for one year, not for two years, but for ten years. Now, he has an opt-out after five. But to invest that much in that particular player Dennis, when is I a hear, little bit bizarre When I hear me. the player say, I don't hustle, he's no longer on my list. Yeah, I mean, and here's the thing. I'm sure the first year is going to go swimmingly, okay? Machado yeah. is going to put on his happy face, and he's going to bust it down the line as much as he can to show the young guys how it's done. Right. But you watch when the Padres start losing, and maybe in the second year, and Machado sitting here, you know, his, the checks are clearing. Yep. If they haven't already cleared, I don't know if he gets it all in one chunk. But 
I, I just find it hard to believe that he's magically going to become some uh, poster boy for how to play baseball 100% a hustle all the time and, for 10 years. And you don't always see until it happens if the players, once they get their money, do they become better players, do they become better uh, role models, or do they get worse? And in this case, Machado's got paid. There are, I, For example, to me, Francisco Lindor, I don't care what he's going to make, and it's going to be monstrous when he does make it, he's not going to change the way he plays. Some other guy, no matter what, some other guys might. Yeah, and so, but I'll say this. Let me just say this about uh, the Machado signing in San Diego. I, I'm, I'm just getting done saying I wonder how it's going to work for 10 years. Is he going to hustle and all this? Still a very talented player. The Indians caught a break because it sounds like the White Sox could have matched San Diego's $300 right. million when you added in all of the, the incentives and everything else, and the White Sox were shocked that Machado didn't come to them because it's the market size, it's the fact that he, you know he's probably familiar with the American League to a degree. The Indians caught a break by Machado not being in well, their division, they and Francona a, said as much. They caught a break for the next year or two, but when it's going to when the uh, agent for Lindor calls and says four hundred thousand, uh, that won't be the break anymore. Well, no, I mean, yeah, I, I think Lindor has an expiration date in Cleveland. Yeah, that's no two, secret. Two years. Bauer has an expiration date in yeah. Cleveland. I'm simply saying for 2019, the fact that the White Sox did not add Machado helps the Indians. Because the White Sox, to me, are going to be the next good team in this division. Not acquiring Machado delays that for them. All right. The Indians uh, did sign a relief pitcher. That uh, the relief pitching might might be better than we thought it was going to be. You Clifford. agree with that? Clipper. You're talking about Clipper? Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, you know, Veteran guy. Listen, the bullpen, believe it or not, worries me less than the everyday lineup in the, in the case of the Indians. Because bullpens in general are such a crapshoot. You don't know from year to year right. how certain guys are going to be. And invariably, every year, one or two relievers shocks you. Yeah, a and one or two a, a drops, Tyler Olsen. And one or two drops off. Yeah, you think about Olsen going goose eggs yeah. for the entire year, uh, ERA. You think about Oliver Perez off the scrap heap last year. They bring him back this year. So there, there's going to be one or two guys in the Indians' bullpen this year that shocks everybody. So I'm not as worried about the bullpen as I am about the ability of this team to score runs. All right, 216-575-0403. When we get back, we'll talk more about that uh, bullpen. Sokolowski University in. I was there today, as I usually am on Thursday. Big stalking opportunities today, D-Man. And I met, believe it or not, I met the III man. Oh. He's been calling my radio quickies. show for, yeah. He's been calling my show forever, and I actually met him today. But I had a better, he, that was fine that I met him, but I had a better lunch. Sokolowski's University in 11 to 3, Monday through Friday, Friday and Saturday nights for dinner. You can't beat it. It's the best there is. We'll come back in a moment. Don't forget, I'll be on 92.3 The Fan tomorrow from 10 until 2. In for Andy Baskin, uh, along with Jeff Phelps, Dennis Maniloff from The Plain Dealer. And I return in a moment right here on uh, Cleveland.com. Concrete in your garage is uneven, cracked, pitted, and just plain ugly. Transform your garage into a welcoming entryway with Nature Stone flooring. Reduce tracked in dirt, eliminate puddling and salt damage. Plus, Nature Stone corrects uneven concrete so you don't have to worry about tripping or slipping. Call or go to naturestone.com to schedule your free in-home estimate today and get up to 50% off. Nature Stone is the affordable garage floor solution that beautifies your home. Nature Stone, the only concrete solution. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program has been recognizing role model students and teachers since 2007. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Supporting Education. There, you can nominate students in kindergarten through 12th grade as academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as the Teacher of the Month. Every school that participates is eligible for the School of the Year. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine.
anytime you get a chance to uh, to get a major league pitcher, whether whether it be reliever or starter, on a non-roster deal, it, it's kind of hard to not want to bring him in. I mean, he's had a really strong career. He's held his stuff over a period of time. Really nice change up. The ability to, to pitch a full inning. Um, we, we're really excited to bring him in and get a look at it and see, see where it could go. He'll go right into the mix of that group competing for bullpen spots. How challenging is it in spring, especially with relievers, when you have a big group of guys, maybe a couple open spots, just to evaluate? It, it's, it is very challenging. Um, I think you can make some really bad mistakes by looking at ERAs, things like that. Um, you know, for guys that have track records, it's a little bit easier because you can go back and think, okay, is this the same guy? You know, is it is his velocity down? Is you know, um, I mean, Otero's a good example. The year he made the club, he I think he had a six or seven ERA. Every ground ball found its way through the infield, but we thought he actually pitched really well, and he made the club and been here for going on his fourth year. Um, it it is tough because guys throw at different times. You know the. The guys that are pitching at the end of the game, they're facing number 99. We don't know who they are. You know, they might be coming out. They might be their biggest at bat of their life. You know, they're going to call home after that at bat and tell mom and dad they face Tyler Clippard. It's it's hard. You know, you try to you try to th you know who can pitch to a scouting report. You know, a lot of time guys that you know there's hitters in, in spring training. They want to go up and hit the first pitch they see. When the season starts, that's not necessarily the case. Here's Terry Francona talking about his bullpen options. Uh, there you see what what is uh, reporting. Looks like uh, uh, Cody Anderson, uh, Tyler Clippard, Nick Goody. We forgot about him. Tyler Olson, Oliver Perez, Danny Salazar. That would be a nice touch if that happens. Yeah, Adam, uh, enough. Yeah, Adam Simber, John Edwards, who uh, Francona is high on. Brad Hand will be the closer. Dan Otero and Neil Ramirez. There's some pretty good names in there. You don't know what it's going to be. As I said, at least one or two of those guys is going to surprise us this year. Right. With something. It happens with almost every bullpen uh, around baseball. But, you know, you watch Francona's clips, and we are blessed in this town to have Terry Francona as the manager so hard of the to team. Believe, so hard to believe it's his seventh year coming up. Yeah, and, and he, he doesn't, you know, he was sick a few years ago, but now he looks like he's back to, you know, his the colors in his face again and everything else. But we're, we're lucky to have a manager like him in this town for as long as we have. You credit Antonetti there, because uh, Antonetti and I guess Shapiro, even though Shapiro's moved on, because that friendship is what brought Terry right. Francona to Cleveland. He didn't have to come here. The Tigers, for one team, were looking, uh, looking at him strongly. But what a revelation. And here's the thing. When you listen and watch Terry Francona, you think old school, right? You do, but not when you listen. Well, when you look at him, you think that, but yeah. not when you listen to what he says. Right. When you initially hear him talk, you're thinking, uh, yeah, or when you watch him, it's old school. But you're right. He is very much into the new school metrics in how to evaluate well, or players. Or com a combination of them. Yeah, you're right. He's not beholden to it, but he's definitely interweaving it. He's dovetailing the knowledge that's coming from his front office with his gut instincts about the game. Not too many guys with more years in action. Now, Bruce Bochy's uh, resigning after this year. I don't know who else Who else is, has a longer uh, tenure than uh, Francona. Yeah, Socha's gone uh, now. I mean, if you um, forget, Francona started in Philadelphia, right? Yes, he started in Philly, uh, struggled there, and then, of course, went to Boston first year. It was 04. They win the World Series. Right. He wins two in Boston, which I believe cements him for the, the National Baseball Hall of Fame. It would have been great to seal it with the 2016, but I still think he's he's in. No question uh, as a about manager. it. We're coming back one more time Monday night. Terry Pluto will join us. Uh, Bud Shaw will be here on Tuesday. The D Man will be here Thursday. We'll fill in uh, Wednesday uh, over the weekend. We'll take care of that. And Northfield Park is your home for live and simulcast racing. And of course, uh, you can uh, go there 
any uh, at the time days you see there, which of course would be Monday through Wednesday, Saturday and Sunday evenings with the 6 p.m. Uh, start time. A post time open early every day for simulcast action from the top thoroughbred and harness tracks all over the world. It's free admission, free parking every day. That's at Northfield Park. Each week, the Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes students who are role models from across the state of Ohio. This week, we head to Brexville Broadview Heights High School and meet Joe Labus. Joe excels in football, baseball, basketball, and in the classroom as well. The Ohio Lottery, proud to salute Joe Labus, this week's shining star. He's truly Brexville's man for all seasons, Joe Labus. As a freshman a year ago, he was the B's starting quarterback on the football team, the starting shortstop on the baseball team, and a starting forward on the basketball team. Joe is phenomenal. First off, we're so lucky to have him. Uh, he just does a little bit of everything. I think he's one of the better defenders in the area. Uh, rebounds, can shoot the ball, has a beautiful stroke. And the nice thing about it is we're going to have two more years with him. That's even better with Joe. Labus had his football season cut short this year in the second game of the year with an injury to his throwing hand. He's thrilled to be healthy and on the basketball court looking like he hasn't missed a beat. Especially with my injury, um, my wrist, my right wrist, I'm just my dominant hand. So um, I've always tried to work on shooting. You know, um, I thought I was a pretty good shooter last year and I just didn't want to lose that. So I was kind of a little worried about that. but. You know, I think, I think I'm good. I just got to keep shooting, making sure it's good. The time away from his teammates and the games he loves gave Labus a unique perspective. I've learned a lot, actually, believe it or not. Um, not, not being able to play, it's, you know, you know, it's heartbreaking. But, um, you know, I, I learned a lot um, just interacting with my teammates, being the leader. Every day, he just has the best attitude. He comes and works, and I mean, his teammates love him. It just brings everything, and he's just a competitor to play football, basketball, and baseball as a freshman, and uh, you love those kind of guys. It shouldn't be a surprise that Labus excels in the classroom as well, with above a 3.5 grade point average and the realization of just how important academics are. They're very important, you know, especially if you're trying to play a sport in college. Um, you know, there's colleges looking at your grades all, all the time, so you got to make sure you're on top of that, um, you know, making sure you're studying, doing well in school, and it'll pay off. In the age of specialization in high school sports, Labus is a bit of a throwback, a three-sport athlete who started in all three sports at the varsity level since his freshman year. Whatever you do on this basketball court is only gonna make you better for football. And that's why we're lucky that some of our guys, a lot of our guys play multiple sports instead of just focusing on one sport. And you lose that, you really do. You can't put a price on competing and learning how to lead. Well, if you know a student deserving of recognition, visit OhioLottery.com. Go to the About section and find the tab which is marked as Supporting Education to nominate him or her as an academic all-star. He or she could end up as one of our shining stars from the Ohio Lottery. Let's take a look at this date in Les Levine history, D-Man, and see what happened on this date. Uh, back in uh, 1972, Les gets a job offer for 375. He figures, well, that's not bad after all. 375 times 52 weeks is 19,500. Of course, that uh, happened until he found out that 375 was $3.75 an hour. Not quite the same. Let's uh, take a look at uh, the, the week in review. Back on uh, the 18th on Monday, the fraternity house bookie uh, made the following offer. If you bet with him at the racetrack, instead of uh, betting at the window, the incentive would be that he would buy you a program, a hot dog, and a small Sprite. How could you go away from that? And then uh, Les gets a call from his Sandlot coach. This is in February 19th, uh, telling him that when he would be in the lineup, they would change the name of the position from designated hitter to designated batter, just in case. Les and his high school uh, backcourt mates combined for 32 points and a win over Cleveland Heights. John Meyer had 17, and Dave Turk scored 15. You do the math. You got that figured out? You got it. 216-575-0403. We'll get to a call in a moment. Uh, I want to say, uh, read this from uh, Cleveland Bill. Hi, Dennis. Hi, Les. The college athletes should not be paid beyond scholarships, period. Even high school stars risk injuries 
uh, playing at their games, all athletes who play at any level are at risk. If sport is the athlete's real reason for being in school, then he should not be in college. Let the pros draft athletes right out of high school, play them a la LeBron James, and then put them into a developmental league if they are not ready for prime time. College studies should be a preparation for full life, emphasizing academic, not athletic scholarships. Well, yeah, I, that's the argument. Yeah, I'm with the idea that, you know, Williamson should be allowed to play uh, – you know, when he wants to play, but if he's going to go to college and you know he's a one and done, I think he should be compensated because he's one of the revenue producers. Uh, I, and I do believe that the vast majority of guys who go to uh, athletes who go to college want to get their degrees. But there is a small amount of those guys who aren't there to get their degrees. And that's, that's the correct. group that I'm focusing on. Yeah. Well, you know, it, I, and, and then there's nothing wrong to me with not being go, not going to college and saying I'm going I'm here for my degree. No, I'm here to bide my time until I can go to the NBA. Well, one of the Calipari teams had five guys that could go right uh, uh, one and done, but generally you're talking about one guy on a team. You're not talking about a full team. True. I mean, there, there are other the rest of your players are not one and done guys. True, and, and again, when we talk about Zion Williamson, we're talking about the exception to the exception to the exception to the rule. There, there, there's only one Zion Williamson we're talking about here. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to Mike and uh, Avon. Hello, Mike. How are you? Good. Last long time. Uh, this business with Zion Williamson, I think the only people that will be disappointed if he chooses not to come back will probably be the network broadcasting the games and the NCAA themselves because based on the game, 36 seconds, you saw how many tickets were sold, the price of the tickets, the the, the Super was there Bowl. There, there was, there was, it was Super Bowl uh, pricing. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, it's like it had to be a big letdown for the networks. I mean, but uh, I'm thinking that he may come back for the NCAAs only, if nothing else, to prove that he's that he's healthy, that he's not a damaged piece of, you know, goods. Would you t would you take the chance? I mean, he's going to get to, he's going to make yeah he's words, he's uh, he's going to make that yeah, big money there's, anyway. There's doctors out there. You got the clinic. You got whoever. If he would happen to get him. They'll put him through his face. They'll know whether he's injured yeah. or not before, you know. Yeah, you you got to draft him number one no matter what if you're the, the first team to, to choose. You you can't – I mean, that injury can't be that bad. Yeah. I would think. Absolutely. I would still take him. Absolutely. Yeah, you, yeah, you'd have to. Anything – by the way, what are you looking for over the last – next 30 games or whatever it is for the Cavaliers? Well, uh, I, I know you're not going to see Kevin Love as much as they could probably play him simply because they've got to watch and make sure that they're in the bottom three. As far as <laughs> I think being you're on it, Mike. Can't that. take the chance of winning a, a silly basketball game. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what I want. I just want to see him progress, and I'm hoping that they bring Larry Drew back, to be honest with you. I think he's performed under extraordinary circumstances this year. Joe, uh, uh, was it Chris Fedor who ran it through? And I didn't see any potential coaches that he listed that, that would thrill me. Mike, you know what, though? You know who Larry Drew reminds me of in this case is Greg Williams. He you, mean what, me of, you mean what they're doing to him? Putting well, him in what's going to happen to Larry Drew? Williams was a guy yeah. who held the place, stabilized the franchise, was in a difficult spot, actually won some games. Thanks, Greg, for a job yeah, well done. Nice You're life. on your way. Yeah. Larry Drew, same kind of thing, even though he's not winning as much as Greg Williams. Did. Mike, great to talk to you. Thank you for the call. I appreciate it very much. And Thanks, uh, we'll do it again. I'll be on uh, 92.3 The Fan tomorrow. That'll be from 10 until 2. I'll be in for Andy Baskin uh, along with Jeff Phelps. Back here on Monday night with Terry Pluto Tuesday. And Dave Bacon tomorrow night with the show from 6 until 7. And then uh, Terry Pluto on Monday and uh, Bud Shaw on Tuesday. We'll see you somewhere along the line of all the shows I've ever done. This was the most recent. <laughs>